Hey backbenchers, so today's topic is easy, but its name is quite difficult to say. So we've got two topics today, Thiriasis palpebrarum and trichiasis, right? I'm Dr. Backbencher and let's start this. Huh. So Thiriasis palpebrarum, right, in simple words, is it's just an infestation of the eyelids by the insect called the crab lice right now this insect is quite notorious it lives in the hair right and, and it's it's specifically known to live in pubic hair and also there are cases like for example in, in theriasis palpebrarum they tend to live among the eyelashes right so they infest the eyelids it's more specifically when i'm talking about eyelids they infest the uh, eyelashes because they're hair and lice love hair as we all know um, and the mode of transmission how they get from one person to the other is through contact right the most common way uh, how crab lice spread is through sexual activity right and other than that if you use for example the towel or a tissue or something like that of an infected person and it has the lice or the eggs of the lice on it so there's a chance that they will transmit it to you right now symptoms of theriasis palpebrarum includes blepharitis see i told you in the previous lecture that blepharitis is not is not by its own a disease it is uh, a symptom of other diseases right and so there's a, a blepharitis right uh, itching and irritation simple not something difficult uh, signs nits and eggs adherent to eyelids right and uh, because of course they lay eggs and adult lice may also be present they may also be seen although they're very small uh, and there is blood stain debris because we know crab lice and all these other kind of lice which live on the human body uh, they uh, their diet is actually blood right treatment is the removal of lice right uh, through different uh, drugs right because they're insects we might use insecticides like for example malathion right uh, I hope you don't forget malathion from your uh, pharmacology and there are other drugs as well we can use for example uh, pilocarpine may be used there is uh, evidence of physostigmine uh, which can work and yellow mercuric oxide right yellow mercuric oxide may also be used because mercury is a toxic material, right? It's a heavy metal and it can disrupt the uh, the, the, the metabolic processes inside the lice and uh, cause its killing, right? And of course, after that, uh, uh, taking care of your hygiene is also important, right? And abstaining from sexual activity uh, and also um, taking care of hygiene uh, in the way that you don't use someone else's towels and stuff. The next disease is even more easier. Uh, trichiasis is the bending of eyelashes towards the eyeball. So if here's, a, uh, if here's an eyelid and you have eyelashes here, let's say there's this knotty eyelash which which kind of uh, grows in, uh, in, in this direction, right? So if it grows in this direction, if you have the eyeball here, it'll touch. As a result, it'll cause problems like, uh, like signs and symptoms like uh, uh, lacrimation, uh, photophobia, corneal abrasion because it is rubbing against it and ulceration also of the cornea it also uh, cause conjunctivitis because of course the eyeball is covered by the conjunctiva lacrimation because uh, the feeling of a foreign body of course uh, it's, it's a reflex the, the lacrimal glands will release um, their secretions and uh, etiology why or how can such a condition occur well there, are, there can be a few uh, conditions like, for example, blepharitis, right? For example, there's this, uh, this, this uh, whole place gets inflamed, right? And, it, and it, there's, uh, there is edema and stuff here, right? Uh, and that causes the shape of this whole thing to change from its normal to something else. So there's a chance that some of these eyelashes which were straight, they might eventually uh, turn in, in, they might eventually go rogue. They might turn in directions which are not, uh, which we would not like, right? Eyelid injuries, similar, right? Hurt, you hurt the eyelid in a way that it, it, uh, it causes uh, the, the eyelid to bend towards the inside, causing all the eyelashes to, uh, it, uh, causing all the eyelashes to, you know, rub across, the, across your uh, eyeball. And that is, of course, again, trichiasis. Trachoma, we'll talk about that later, but 
Well, let's, uh, for now, it's, it's a bacterial infection, right, which affects the eyelid, right? So we'll talk about that later, uh, in some later lecture. And chemical burns, again, uh, same s similar uh, kind of uh, problem, right? You burn it, and as a result, it might change its shape from its origin to something else, and as a, as a result, the hair might grow towards the inside. Treatment is uh, very easy. Well, if, uh, you treat it by treating the underlying cause. So, for example, if you have blepharitis, right? You, you treat the blepharitis and this will go back to normal. But sometimes, like for example, if you have a chemical burn, right? Or an, or an eyelid injury which is very permanent, right? Or it leaves behind scars. So you can't wait for that, right? If Even if you wait, it, it won't have any effect. So what it'll do, that you will you have to remove this faulty uh, follicle, right? Yeah, but uh, when I say follicle, I mean like from the from its very very uh, root. So uh, just a little bit, um, you, you know, you can you can you can uh, finish the video right now if you want because I think that's enough. But still, uh, for uh, the few of you, if you might stay, well, usually you see when 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 uh, let's say here's the hair follicle, right? Mm. And here's the hair growing from it. Usually when when uh, when you cut or you pluck out hair so the thing which happens is that the hair might get cut from hair or from hair right it never usually gets out from all the way from hair right so there's always this place and this place gets nutrition and after a few after a few days what happens is that uh, after a few days uh, you have a brand new hair right a brand new hair occurring uh, growing back from here so if the, so, in, in, that's good. But if, if a guy has uh, uh, this disease uh, where they are growing towards the inside persistently, so what what you'll do is you have to. What's going on? Okay, wait a second. Pen. Okay. Uh, so, so you have to remove it from this place. So you have to do something to destroy this whole place, right? And for that, there are a few uh, there are a few methods uh, which which you can use. Uh, there is. Uh, electrolysis right you can use electric current right you can use electric current and actually kill this follicle you might use cryotherapy or you might use uh, cryotherapy is like uh, using very very cold temperatures to kill something right so cryotherapy uh, or you, you might use uh, uh, some uh, so cryotherapy you can you can use cryotherapy to kill this follicle and you might also use uh, an argon laser, right? Argon laser also, the, the the rays from the laser might they have the ability to destroy it. Or you can even mechan you can even mechanically uh, pluck it out by uh, the fancy process called epilation, right? Or you just take a forcep, right, and you and you just pull it out, right? And, and that's and that's it, right? And the, there's nothing about that. Treatment is treating the underlying cause or removal of the faulty follicle. Or destruction of the follicle by various methods that I just said right now electrolysis cryotherapy and laser hair removal uh, I think that's it thank you very much if you enjoyed please subscribe um, and like and share and yeah